So we are going to take a look at uh, solving systems of equations. As it happens, typically there are uh, a lot more variables than there are equations. So uh, in the process, we are going to uh, learn about Gaussian elimination again. We are going to repeat this uh, topic uh, several times uh, all the way through the middle of semester. It's going to be with us in a variety of forms. Uh, let me just uh, briefly mention what are the Gaussian elimination steps. There are three types of steps we can take when you are solving an equation. Uh, we learned uh, last time one thing that we sometimes do is to exchange two, uh, two, uh, two equations. Or uh, when we want to describe it in terms of row operations, uh, so this is a row operation version of the same thing. this amounts to exchange two rows. Well, why do you want to exchange the rows? You remember our ultimate goal is to make a, a matrix look like an echelon four. So sometimes things are not in the right place, so we have to move them around until they are in the right place. That's why we're doing it. Uh, number two, the thing that we do to an equation is to multiply by a number. Uh, to multiply uh, an equation by a uh, well, let me leave a blank space here by a number so for example in a very basic algebra you come across 2x equal to 3 what do you do to solve it you say you divide by 2 or you can say multiply by a half which is the same thing So you say x is equal to 3 halves. So say I can say I divided by 2. I, say I can say I multiplied by 1 half. Of course, I could have taken that equation multiplied by any number I wanted. Uh, I could have multiplied it by 10 to get 10x is equal to 15. That would have been legitimate, just useless. Uh, so we can always uh, multiply an equation by a number. There's just one number we shouldn't use. Uh, among all the numbers that we could try, there's a one thing that is uh, going to be quite wasteful or uh, not in the spirit of things if we do that. What do you think is that problematic number? If I multiply both sides by zero, I'm doing a legitimate operation. This is correct. But what is uh, left of this, Zero equal to zero does not convey any information. I already knew zero was equal to zero. If I multiply by zero and then I lose track of what I had before, I'm not going to have the root. I'm not, I cannot get a root out of having the information z equal to zero. But this would have been okay. This would have been okay. So when you are multiplying an equation by a number, uh, you implicitly you mean that you are not doing a silly thing. You are multiplying it by a non-zero number or if you are dividing you are not dividing by infinity so uh, that is something to keep in mind item, item number three which is the more dominant action uh, the one that is used most often uh, was what uh, you would take a, that, that's a uh, uh, reason for this elimination what kind of activity did we go through to eliminate a variable uh, we would, to add, what we did was we would add multiple of our uh, equation to another equation, to add uh, a multiple of an equation to another equation. get to add multiple of an equation to another equation. Uh, so that would be a row operation version of it would be to add multiple of a row to another row. And the 
matrix version of that would be to multiply a row by of course a non-zero number and this one add a multiple of a row to another row Now here, if you do the silly thing of multiplying a row by zero and try to add it to another row, it would be perfectly okay. It's just a waste of time. To multiply a row by zero, so everything is going to become a zero. If you add it to another row, it's not going to make a dent in another row. So here, I didn't put uh, that uh, fine print next to this one, uh, even though you still need to worry about it. So. Okay, with these things in mind, we go and uh, take one of these equations and then try to solve it. So I pick this one. Uh, uh, it says 6x3 plus 2x4 minus uh, 4x5 minus 8x6 is equal to 8. And 3x3 plus x4 minus 2x5 minus 4x6 is equal to 4 and then uh, 2x1 minus 3x2 plus x3 plus 4x4 minus 7x5 plus x6 is equal to 2 6x1 minus 9x2 plus 11x4 minus 19x5 plus 3x6 is equal to 0. So we have this system of equation. You notice there is a peculiar look to it. That a bunch of them are missing up front here, but well, that, that's how it is. Uh, sometimes they come in that form. Another thing we look at, uh, pay attention to, you see there are a lot of variables here, six of them. But we can't, there are four equations. From four pieces of information, you cannot extract six things. So we know ahead of time that we are facing a situation that our variables are going to split into two groups. One of them are the free ones. So they can roam around, do whatever they want to do. And the other ones are going to be dependent ones. They are going to take the clues from the free ones as to what to be. Uh, now, who is going to be free and who is going to be uh, dependent? It depends on how you set up your equation. Uh, so let's go ahead and set it up one way. We might as well just write them the way they are written. It's just good enough. There is no reason to mess them up by, say, putting x6 first, first and x1 last. Uh, if you, you don't have any reason to do that, well, you might as well not do that. It just uh, causes more error. One thing I uh, mentioned uh, was that uh, one big source of error is just copying the problem from the text inside. So let me double check myself to make sure I haven't done anything uh, wrong while copying the problem. There are just uh, too many numbers, and that's a characteristic of uh, linear algebra. And the uh, source of uh, various headaches we need to live with just the nature of the beast. That's how it is. 11x4 minus 19 plus 3 equal to 0. Okay. Uh, we could have left this thing as it is, but then we have to keep writing these x's, and that is essentially a waste of time. If we keep their spaces, we might as well uh, not write them. If we don't write them, then what, what we get to is that uh, the matrix format of it. So I go ahead and make a matrix format in the matrix format now uh, there is nothing here that means it's 0 x1 there is nothing here it means 0 x2 so I have 0 0 6 2 minus 4 minus 8 8 uh, this is from the right hand side I keep in the back of my mind that that thing is really on the right hand side if I have a hard time with doing that I just separate the matrix into two pieces again I don't have uh, these guys here either, so that means they are zeros. Everybody else is nicely lined up for me. If they are not, then I do make them line up. 
uh, don't forget this one is a one uh, if it doesn't have a coefficient means the coefficient is one not that it is a zero so avoid uh, that mistake and uh, we just keep writing so I have two minus three uh, if you notice I uh, be making any kind of arithmetic mistake let me know because you are going to soon notice that the price is quite high what should I write here zero because I don't have it so when you're writing equation you don't write zero something but when you write a matrix you better write the zero uh, 11 minus 19 3 and 0 so this is the matrix version uh, what is our holy grail our holy grail is to take this thing uh, first step half of the grail, not the whole grail, half of the grail is to make this coefficient matrix, take that and convert it to an echelon form. So, convert uh, coefficient matrix Okay, so that's halfway uh, through our process. Uh, after that, what we plan to do is to detect uh, the pivot elements versus the uh, free variable. So, uh, so we want to separate uh, dependent and uh, independent ones. We have to detect who is dependent, who is independent. Independent variables, we also call them free variables. Uh, dependent variables, we uh, also call them pivot variables in the next stage what we are going to do is to send the free ones to the right hand side and treat them as parameters they can be whatever they want to be uh, send free uh, variables to right once you uh, move the free variables to the right what kind of a shape would your uh, matrix have so kind of we uh, you get a triangular form and then what do you do with that yeah solve by uh, what is it solve by back substitution So, it's a very clear uh, set of steps to go through, just that we have to set our mind into doing it. <laughs> In this stage, converting your coefficient matrix to uh, echelon form, that is where you're going to apply all those row operations we just talked about. So, uh, this one is where you apply row operations uh, <clears throat> or if you had your matrix you apply the same thing to that uh, and uh, our objective is to do this thing systematically we don't want to jump around do things that are unnecessary we want to follow some sort of an algorithm that given any problem this can be applied and it will result in a solution so essentially we are looking for something that the computer can duplicate now notice that many problems that we solve are small size it's every now and then some sort of a little trick uh, can simplify and give us a shortcut and such that is not really the point of uh, what we have in mind uh, we are trying to emphasize things that are suitable for systematic operation however um, uh, we are not applying what is done in industry for solving equations because sometimes that produces uh, a bit of unfriendly numbers uh, some fractions and such which might increase our task so uh, keep in mind that we are somewhere in between two spots kind of between a rock and a hard place we are we are not going all the way out to act like a computer and we are not trying to be uh, kind of arbitrary in our actions either so we are somewhere in between now 
let's go ahead and see. We want to do a, a row operation until we get an echelon form. What was the echelon form? Echelon form, we said we need to have something that is non-zero, which is going to act as a pivot. And using that pivot, we are going to reduce anything underneath that into zeros. Then there could be something. Perhaps we might have more zeros here. What we expect from the echelon form is that the number of zeros from each row to the next has to increase. Okay? And then the first non-zero -en non entry of each row is going to be called what? That's going to be our uh, pivot and so on. So echelon formation, we expect the zeros to march forward until they can't march anymore, meaning your coefficient matrix, perhaps all the elements of that are converted to zero, in which case we cannot uh, insist that they march uh, to the right anymore. Okay, given that, uh, let's go ahead and see what would be the first operation we are going to apply here. Remember, we want to start with a non-zero, and elements below that have to be converted to zero. So that implies that we have to apply a certain operation. What operation should I do? Yeah, we better switch these so that the pivot goes on the top of the section of the column, and then later, on a later stage, we use that to zero out anything that is below it. So I indicate what I'm, what I'm going to do. What is it that I'm going to do? I'm going to exchange row 1 with row 3. Okay, this is row 1, 2, 3, 4. We are going to exchange 1 and 3. That means wholesale exchange of everything that you have here. The other guys, you just leave them as it is. So I'll have 2, minus 3, 1, 4, minus 7, 1, 2. Now, once you get good at this, you can do several operations all at the same time. But right now, you just do no, 6 minus 9, 0, 11 minus 19, 3, 0. Okay. Uh, we double check, make sure we didn't copy uh, wrong. So this has to be copy of that. So if you see any mistake, let me know. And then uh, this row stayed put as it was. So that one looks OK. The first row came down here, 0, 0, 6, 2, minus 4, minus 8, 8. The last row, we didn't do anything to that. It has to be where it was. OK. Next. We are still marching toward getting echelon. Echelon means uh, you identify your pivot, and then you work out on the elements below the pivot. Uh, so what should I do now? Excellent. So here is our pivot. We have to take care of these. You know, it, we are lucky in that two of them are already zero, so I'm kind of saved in doing anything there. Actually, better not to do anything there, because you're going to mess up the zeros. Yeah, so it's a negative 3 times row 1 to row 4 is going to be our new row 4. Now, we say multiply this by minus 3, but typically there is no reason to actually change the numbers that are out there. So you can uh, do it in your head. So we still have 2 minus 3, 1, 4, minus 7, 1, 2, 0, 0, 3, 1, minus 2, minus 4, 4, 0, 0, 6, 2, minus 4, minus 8, 8. Okay, help me out with this one. We say multiply this by minus 3 and add to that. So what am I going to get? I better get 0. That's what I wanted to get. Minus 3 times minus 3 is a 9, and a 9 is a 0. No, there was a zero here. It get, it's going to get messed up. So what am I going to get instead? Minus three. This one. Uh, minus uh, twelve and an eleven minus one. This is uh, plus twenty-one and a nineteen is going to be a two. Uh, 
what we were doing minus 3 and 3 is a 0 and don't forget same thing is going to be applied to the right hand side so who's here minus 6 okay we uh, managed to uh, make this guy disappear accidentally that fellow also disappeared which is uh, okay with us so these are already all zeroed out so who is the next pivot so let uh, to to identify the pivots that was a pivot and we use that to get rid of these guys uh, okay yes yeah, so uh, what do you want to do the, well for, let's see uh, who is a pivot now yeah th this is this is our next pivot so we are not this is not going to play any role in fact what is going to happen to x2 we already know something going to happen to x2 and what kind of a variable is it going to be it's going to be what kind of a variable remember this was x1 this is x2s and x3s x2 is a free variable because it didn't become a candidate for being a pivot that's going to eventually go on to the right hand side in our next stage so now this is a pivot we concentrate there are different versions of this, doing these things but the way we are going to do it in this course in this book if we pay attention to the numbers below the pivot there is an alternate version that not only they try to clean out these guys but they also try to clean out those guys uh, it's just uh, another version of same thing so uh, let's go ahead and see what is it that we are going to do this is still uh, whenever we refer to a row it means our current row so you told me what to do uh, uh, okay let's go systematic uh, you want to add this thing to that one is that right yeah what why did we jump over this fellow L let's do them all at the same time or so I want to get rid of this one how do I get rid of that So the systematic way of doing this again, notice that there are actually infinitely many ways of solving any of these equations. We want to give a definite routine to a machine to do. Uh, so he's, uh, the machine is not going to have a choice. So we are going to say use this as a pivot to eliminate items below it. So if I want to use that to kill this one, I have to say what, minus twice row 2 plus row, row 3 and that is going to be our new row 3 now just to have a bit of saving in uh, writing all these numbers we might as well go ahead and do uh, row 4 as well and that is what you were suggesting at the beginning you were saying to do what negative one times row two to do what uh, I'm not sure uh, if I quite follow so you want to use this row to eliminate the six let's go through that one how do you how do you suggest we do that okay you uh, remember uh, the operations that we do our basic operation we are the following either you want to exchange we did some of those like these exchanges or multiply a row we are going to come that to that later on this is what you do most often add a multiple of a row to another row okay so that's a standard I'm sure you can think about other kind of things that are just as legitimate as these guys are these are like kind of those tiny Lego blocks out of which you can build anything you want so these are the ones we go by uh, they're not written in a stone or anything but that's what we use so uh, to use three to make six to go away we have to multiply this thing by some number and the easiest one we can use right now is just minus twice this row added to that well that's going to eliminate six and this simply added to that is going to eliminate minus three as well so now next stage uh, are we clear on this okay okay now we, we go and do this thing one more round two minus three one four minus seven one two now once uh, 
uh, elements below a, zero, below a pivot are all turned into zero, that row becomes a stationary. Essentially, yeah, you know, you can just cover it up. It's all set with that. We don't have any use with it either. This one, now it's uh, stationary too. Zero, zero, three, one, minus two, Okay, now help me out with this one. So what did we say? Double of this to be subtracted from this one. So what do I get here? Zero. So we better get zero. That was our intention. What do we get here? Zero. How about here? Zero. Zero. And this one? So uh, it so happened that all became zero. Uh, that's fine. Now add these two. So the two were zeros already. And then when I add them, of course, I expect to get zero. And what about here? Zero, zero, negative four, and negative two, it looks like. Is that right? Uh huh. So, uh, our, our first objective was to create an echelon form. Echelon form was saying that a number of zeros have to march toward right. The problem is this got too far out uh, without this one going first. So, as you suggested, uh, what do we do? So this is now one, two, three, four. Oh, sorry. Uh, switch out uh, R3 and R4 so that our zeros take the format we want. One, four, minus seven, one, two, zero, zero, three, one, minus two, minus four, four. Uh, so this becomes zero, zero, zero. 0, 0, minus 4, 2. Negative. Thank you. You rescued the day. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now, remember, this was a augmented matrix. This was our coefficients. This is the right-hand side. What does the last equation say? Nothing. It says 0, x is equal to 0. So from now on, it is up to you if you want to keep writing this or you want to just erase it and forget about it. Now before we go further, uh, time. before we go any further, if this was a 1 here or 5 here, what would you say? If instead of 0 here, I had some other number. Uh, we had a name for it. What did we say? A special name for that. It has to be in your notebooks. We called it something. <coughs> well, you would if you have an equation like this. What would you say the answer is, anyway? Uh, no, not undefined. It was something else. Uh, okay. Yeah. So our, uh, no solution. Uh, so simple English would be no. There is no x that you multiply by 0 is going to give you 5. So plain English of it would have been no solution. And uh, the special keyword that we use here was what? In, inconsistent. So inconsistent equation means the information that you are giving me is not consistent with each other. They don't sit together well. Something wasn't quite right. So this is, this is fine. This is consistent because this is also 0. Uh, However, as we said, it becomes unnecessary to write this. Next, uh, let's go ahead and make sure we know who is, a, uh, who is the pivot and who is it. So this is 2 is a pivot. On this row, who is the pivot? 3. And on this row, uh, just negative 4. Uh, and let's keep in mind, this is x1, coefficient of x2, coefficient of x3, x4, x5, x6. These are right-hand side column. So if you went to designate uh, free variables or the ones that are independent, uh, they can do as they like. Who are, who are in this category? x2, x4. <laughs> These guys did not line up with the pivots, so they become free. You can take them to the right hand side. The other ones, which were the pivot or uh, dependent variable, uh, they are what? The x1, 
x3 and who else x6 the, these guys are now what do we do with them now So uh, we are at the beginning of what we had in uh, the beginning of the uh, last lecture. Let's just rewrite it and then I'll ask you to solve the equation or uh, use the text to help you out with this thing. So if I, we go back to the traditional format just to see how it goes, this is 2x1 and what do I write next? Plus x3 and what else? 1x4, right hand side there's a 2x6, thank you. Who comes to the right hand side? This was really minus 3x2, you move it to the right, is that right? Who else comes to the right? Is that four plus? minus 4x4 four and then uh, so many of them I forgot to list them so three of them are going to do the right and three of them staying back the next uh, column we have uh, so help me out with this sorry I'm holding you 3x3 three and what else minus 4x6 is equal to 4 what else minus x4 plus 2x5 is that right so these two had to go to the right the last equation we have reads as minus 4x6 is equal to minus 2 so now this is triangular form and uh, three variables have moved to the right how do we solve this thing use back substitution now So how, do, how does that go? You find x6 here, plug it back here, figure out x3, plug it back here, and then figure out x1. You can read the rest of that in the text. So for uh, Monday, you want to do exercises of 1, 1, and 1, 2. So do 1, 1, and 1, 2 for, for the next class. Okay. So you go here, at the minimum you do the problems that are assigned on the blue sheet.